But today I wanted to talk a little bit about the current state of like web framework support in Dino. Uh, we've heard a lot about uh, Fresh, we've heard a lot about uh, Hono, uh, both of which are awesome frameworks and you should definitely use uh, both of them. But they don't uh, represent everything that's out there in terms of options to you as a developer for uh, building web applications on Dino. So I wanted to do a little bit of a rundown on what the state of web framework support looks like in Dino. But uh, to do that, um, I thought I would uh, uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, put put you to work a little bit uh, to help you help me explain uh, all the different kinds of web frameworks that are uh, supported in Dino today. Um, so uh, in a minute, I'm going to ask for uh, one of you to be a volunteer for a little game we're going to play, uh, which I call uh, Better Know Your Web Frameworks, um, where I'll be asking you some questions about uh, about some web frameworks that exist and that are supported uh, in Dino today. But uh, one thing that you'll notice is a lot of the uh, frameworks that I'm going to talk about uh, have been enabled recently by, uh, the, by NPM specifiers dropping in Dino Deploy. Um, so if you missed that uh, about a couple months ago, or maybe not a couple months, a couple weeks ago, um, within Dino Deploy, you can now use uh, NPM specifiers uh, to actually, I think this makes uh, Deploy the first edge runtime where you can natively use NPM modules um, without like a bundling step. Um, so uh, a lot of what you're about to see in terms of uh, expanded framework support is enabled by this feature. But uh, as I said, I am going to need some help from you. Um, in one moment, I actually uh, need to grab uh, some supplies that I forgot to bring with me. One moment. You have the ability, you have the opportunity to win some fantastic prizes. So if you get three questions right, you get to win two boxes of very unhealthy snack cakes purchased from an American gas station. So that is prize number one. Uh, prize number two uh, is all the uh, Pokemon starters from the current gen of, uh, of Pokemon. So you get to get all three if you get five questions right. But uh, the real, the coup de grace is that you also, if you get all seven questions right, you get a custom Dino hoodie um, featuring, featuring this Dino on the back. I can guarantee you, you definitely want to bring this one home. So. Do I have one brave volunteer from the audience who would like to step on up? So let's see a show of hands. If anyone would like to come on up and answer some questions, don't everybody do it at once. Um, okay, so we got we got a couple. Okay, so uh, okay, also here. So here, well, let's let's we'll settle it by. Okay. All right, so we got, uh, so we have uh, two, two I'll, I'll do a quick coin flip between the two of you. Okay, so that's one and two. Um, all right, number one has it, so you are, you are a contestant. Thank you very much, if you would like to play. Or would you like to play, or were you just calling for a microphone? Did he want to? Can you repeat? Oh, uh, would, would he like to play the game? Would he like to be our contestant? Both okay. Uh, I I can only do one, unfortunately. So we can okay. Yeah, so you are you. So you're going to be our contestant. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. All right, we should. Uh, I'll try to get moving here because I know we uh, have a packed agenda. So. Uh, the uh, and just one thing you'd keep in mind for these questions, you do have three lifelines available to you. We can ask the audience to help you with the answer. Uh, you can ask Ryan Dahl, uh, but note that he might not know. Like he's ju he's just a guy. At the end of the day, he might not know the answer. And uh, you, I would also have like a 50/50 chance you can eliminate half of the of the incorrect answers. So uh, let's get started. Um, we uh, talked about it a little bit already. Uh, we just saw some black magic where Hono was running a web server in a service worker, which uh, I didn't know was a thing um, until today. But uh, for lightweight API servers, uh, you really can't do much better than uh, Hono. Uh, so that's one of the best options that exists for you today. And uh, one of the things I really like it for is for uh, lightweight uh, web applications where I can actually use JSX on the server just to render uh, templates without having to bring in basically any other dependencies besides Hono. So, uh, that's the first framework that I recommend you check out. Um, 
won't uh, belabor it too much more because we've heard all about it already. Um, but our first question actually is uh, sort of inspired by Hono. So the question to you, sir, is uh, Hono applications can use uh, web standard response objects to respond to incoming HTTP requests. What other browser API uh, works with response objects? Uh, is it A, local storage, B, window navigator, C, fetch, or D, WebGL? It should be C, fetch. Is that your final answer? Uh, it says so, yes. All right. Uh, that is correct. You see the Fetch API. Congratulations. Very nicely done. All right. Next up on the hit parade. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't used uh, Loom before, so Loom is a static site generator. It's natively uh, built for Dino. It's really one of the best options you have for static site generation in Dino today. Of course, works great on Dino Deploy. Uh, Dino Deploy has a number of different static file serving options, including one in the standard library. Uh, you could also use a server like Hono to serve static assets. Uh, but uh, Loom supports a number of different uh, content types. And uh, again, I think it's one of your fast fastest and uh, most ergonomic options if you're looking to do static site generation on Dino today. And uh, the Loom inspired question is this one. Uh, again, I think we're, we're kind of ramping up in the difficulty. We'll see uh, if I can stump you eventually. But uh, you know, static assets are stored from a CDN. What does CDN stand for? Is it A, code delivery network, B, constant download network, C, copy download network, or D, content delivery network? That should be D, content delivery network. Is that your final answer? Yes. It is. That is correct. It's the content delivery. Yeah, very nicely done. All right. Fantastic. Um, and uh, another option that uh, is supported on Dino Deploy today, uh, Dino and Dino Deploy generally, is uh, Astro. So, Astro, if you haven't used it before, uh, it's a uh, you know full stack web application development framework. It sort of started uh, for content heavy uh, sites. But it's actually pretty flexible. You can use it to develop you know, dynamic web applications just fine. Uh, one of its very uh, unique characteristics, I think, is the ability to mix and match different UI libraries within the same application. So you could use Vue and React uh, theoretically as you know, UI libraries within the same app if there's uh, you know, a compelling reason why you'd need to use one or both in the same project. Um, this is uh, Dino compatible. Uh, Astro, like a, another framework we'll talk about in a second, uh, is driven by Vite, uh, which is the popular build tool for Node.js and uh, the sort of compilation of like Astro component files is powered by Vite. But uh, Vite support is actually pretty good in Dino today. Most uh, Vite commands can be run using the Dino runtime instead of Node today. Uh, so if you're interested in checking out Astro, uh, Dino does have a template uh, project for it in our uh, GitHub uh, organization. And I'd recommend that you start there. Uh, one thing to note, though, uh, if you want to do server-side rendering with Astro, uh, if you, static site generation uh, works just fine. But the server-side rendering adapter for Dino today uh, works with version 2, 2x, um, but with version 3.0, there are some breaking changes, and uh, we don't have uh, a working SSR adapter for it yet. But hopefully we will in the, in the coming weeks. So uh, the question related to this one uh, comes uh, from you know, the concept of middleware. So Astro, uh, like many server rendering frameworks, uh, has the concept of middleware where you can process incoming requests as they come in. And there's a uh, data structure that's typically used to describe a, a system of middleware. And is that going to be A, a stack, B, a map, C, a tree, or D, a tuple? What do you think? Huh. Um, I th I think stack is probably the one I would initially go to, since middlewares are often layered requests. So th that would have been my first intention, yet I would probably ask Tokyo. Okay. Just to get you. Let's yeah. So let's let's go ahead and we'll burn one of your lifelines here and let's ask Tokyo. So, by a show of hands, who thinks the answer is A stack? Okay. So we have good number of folks. Uh, B. Who thinks it's a map? Who thinks who thinks it is B a map? You might be right. You know what? Let's let's hope burns eternal. I appreciate that. And uh, how about C? Uh, is could it be C a tree? Okay, we have one, two, um, and then D, a tuple. Does anyone think it's a tuple? All right, so none for D. So I think like the, the people have said A. Then we'll stick with the initial, uh, initial 
thought as well as what Tokyo thinks. So, a, 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 a it is. And that's your final answer? Yes. Okay, fantastic. You are correct. The answer is indeed A. A is stacked. Very nicely done. All right. With that, you're already into snack cake range. You're closing in on Pokemon very quickly. So congratulations. You're doing great. Uh, the other option, uh, as uh, Ryan kind of talked about, a more archaic option for doing API, uh, serv uh, API servers and uh, lightweight web applications is Express. If you're doing this, uh, you can certainly do it on Dino Deploy today. Uh, it's probably because you want to take advantage of the very large ecosystem of Connect middleware uh, that does a wide variety of things um, kind of over the course of uh, you know, the, ma the maturity period of this uh, framework, which is, um, you know, so there's lots out there to choose from. Uh, and the uh, question inspired by Express, which does work on Dino and Dino Deploy today, is uh, more of a historical question. So uh, for a very long time, uh, you know, Express had a, a sort of favored uh, templating engine that was uh, has very terse syntax. Uh, it's today known as Pug. Uh, it's sort of a DSL for generating HTML. But does anyone remember what the original name of Pug was? Was it A, Onyx, B, Glint, C, Jade, or D, Garnet? Do you know which of those it was? I would have to take a guess, but maybe Brian could help me out. OK, we're going to burn the Ask Ryan doll <laughs> lifeline. Big fan, by the way. He's a big fan. Uh, Ryan, what say you? Do you remember what the original name of Pug was? I am very unsure. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's not infallible. Okay, so Ryan thinks it's C, because C sounds slightly familiar. Does that inform your thinking at all? That, that'll do. Okay, so C, final answer. C, C it is. You are correct to go with Ryan this time, so very nicely done. We're up to five, so you've, you've got the snack cakes, you've got the Pokemon, there's two more left, two more left to get to the, get to the final prize. Gambarimas. All right. <laughs> Uh, another uh, framework that works great uh, on Dino and Dino Deploy today, uh, which I use daily for, uh, almost daily, for the documentation site at the new docs site at docs.dino.com is powered by Docusaurus. And as a static site generator, uh, it too works great with Deploy. You can use a static file server on top of it. What I do is I have a Hano server that sits on top of, uh, you know, it creates like a static asset directory. It reads the uh, Docusaurus generated content from there. Um, and then I can do redirects and some other dynamic stuff that sits on top of my uh, of the content generated from Docusaurus. Um, but one thing to note is because Docusaurus uh, has a build process that's heavily based on uh, Webpack, um, not all of Webpack and the Webpack ecosystem works really well on the, in the Dino runtime. So, so if you try to run NPM scripts uh, with the Dino runtime instead of Node, some of those may break. So your most likely workflow for using Docusaurus today would be running NPM scripts um, probably with a Node runtime that's also installed on your machine. So uh, next question, uh, inspired by Docusaurus. Uh, so Docusaurus does support writing content in a variety of uh, formats, uh, Markdown being one. Um, but there's also another format that blends Markdown and React component syntax together. Um, and is that format called A, JSX doc, B, MDX, C, JSONP, or D, DTSX? That's B, MDX. Final answer? Absolutely. Your conviction as well is, is well earned. That is indeed uh, MDX. All right, and to uh, just a couple more to wrap it up here. So we have, uh, I think actually that's you know that's five. I think I was off by we had a off by one error. I think you have you've answered all of them correctly, but I think there's two more left. Uh, Another uh, option to check out is uh, SvelteKit. So SvelteKit uh, is the sort of full stack development framework built on the Svelte uh, UI, uh, UI framework, front end UI framework. And uh, it actually does work pretty great on Dino today. There's a community adapter. Um, so SvelteKit applications uh, have the, are extendable by you know, adapters that can generate a server that can run in a variety of environments. So SvelteKit has adapters for many popular uh, hosting environments. And there's a community adapter for Dino Deploy uh, which also works great. Uh, so there's a, a template application, again, in the Dino land GitHub repository or GitHub organization that you can check out as a starting point. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, generally speaking, because uh, Vite support is relatively robust in Dino, um, you'll find that most of the operations you can perform on a SvelteKit project, you can run through the Dino runtime without uh, having to have Node installed. And uh, the question I have for you, uh, based on Svelte uh, and Svelte Kit, is you know in the upcoming Svelte Five release, uh, there's a new feature uh, that provides guidance to the Svelte compiler uh, that a variable contains reactive state. And is that feature called uh, a reactors, b runes, c resources, or d reagents? B runes. Uh, and with the speed and conviction of that answer, I'm guessing it's your final one. Yes. It is. Fantastic. And you're correct. It is runes. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. Coming into the final question with one lifeline remaining. Uh, I feel good about your chances, though. I think you're going to make it. Uh, and then the final one, of course, uh, is fresh. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to try fresh yet, if you're new to Dino, haven't uh, dipped your toe in yet, uh, it's definitely a great time to check it out. We have uh, a great full-time maintainer who's been making uh, fresh, uh, fresh better every single, every single day, every single week, uh, with new releases and uh, patch releases, all that kind of stuff. And uh, the thing that I think you're uh, really going to enjoy if you haven't tried yet is the partials feature, which Luca demonst demonstrated a, a couple minutes ago, uh, which is one of the better implementations of that sort. Like if you've used like a Hotwire or like other related technologies and other uh, server rendered frameworks, um, Partials is a really powerful take on this concept. So uh, definitely worth checking out. And the fresh related question to bring us home uh, is going to be this, which is uh, client side components in fresh islands are Preact components that are rendered on the server and then hydrated on the client. Uh, what Preact feature is often used for state management for these components? Is it A, signals, B, references, C, fragments, or D, option hooks? Should be A, signals. Should be A, signals? Well, how sure are you that it's signals? Like this, the, your Pre sureness. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Okay, but so you're, you're willing to risk this hoodie <laughs> on that question. Yeah. I yeah. just want to make sure. Yes, but... F just to be certain, we can also use the, the last lifeline on the last question. OK, well, we'll burn the last lifeline on the last question. So uh, it does look like Signals is still in the running. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a positive indicator. Um, how, how are you feeling? Confident. OK, so A, final answer. Final answer. You are correct. It is A, Signals. <laughs> Congratulations. So. You did a great job. You did it. You won the snack cakes. You won the Pokemon. You won the hoodie. You ran the table. Congratulations. You did an amazing job. And um, as Ryan mentioned earlier, mo the module support in uh, Dino for uh, NPM modules specifically has never been better. So uh, chances are that your favorite framework uh, probably works pretty well. And if it doesn't, uh, please uh, file an issue in the uh, Dino repository. Uh, let us know about any NPM compatibility issues. We want to uh, jump on those as soon as we can. So thank you very much. Excellent work. Uh, and thanks for having us here in Tokyo. I appreciate it.